but let's move on. I'm joined now by Kevin Hurley, who's the former head of counterterrorism at City of London Police. Thank you for joining us on the show, Kevin. Always a pleasure. Can we start with this Ferrari over this projector, putting those images onto Big Ben? And now, uh, as, I, as you may have heard, I was there the other night. I showed the police the projector. I said, why aren't you going to take this down? They st stood aside and didn't do anything whatsoever. It was there for well over one hour. And it's made the front pages of newspapers. It's been beamed around the world. And now number 10 is saying it should have been removed. Can I ask you, why didn't the police step in and do anything at the time? Well, I'd, I'd say almost certainly it's because the individual gold command or bronze, bronze commander, as they would call him or her, the person on the ground, probably a chief inspector, possibly a superintendent, either wasn't aware or decided in the interests of preserving tranquility, decided not to do it. I think they're taking the wrong uh, position, police generally, with many, many demonstrations of all sorts going on in the country. There is a case for police being far more robust in the face of anti-Semitic uh, behaviour, which this is a clear example of, or people preaching hatred or violence against anyone of whatever creed. I think we're just seeing a symptom of what's gone wrong with the police in terms of the leadership feeling it's not appropriate for them to, quite frankly, get stuck in. I can understand why that is, because the police, police feel, if you like, bedeviled on all sides and feel that perhaps they don't have the political or the media support. And of course, whatever they do is captured on the cameras and they're vilified at every turn. I look at some of the headlines I see in, in newspapers and think, well, what do you think you're doing? All you're doing is mm. destroying the morale of the police and we'll all suffer for it. So in short, yes, of course, the police should have stopped that. It was clearly an anti-Semitic uh, statement very offensive to probably millions of people up and down the UK. But it comes down to why didn't the boss on the ground, her or him, decide to deal with that? Uh, and I just think we, are, we have ended up with so many senior police officers who are quite timid in taking action. Very often they're, they're officers, they're constrained. Once they're there in a large group, deployed as a group of police support unit, as they call it, they have to work under the authority of the bosses who are there, their inspectors, chief inspectors. And it's disappointing to see yet again what I think is a lack of decisive leadership where the the pet phrase will be trolled out, oh, we did it in the interests of preserving tranquility. Well, Kev, I'll tell you, I we was there. We are losing the streets. I'm telling you, we're losing the streets in London. Well, I wonder if the word losing is appropriate or actually is it lost? Because I was there the other night and I was specifically pointing out to individual officers on that beat, that guy's wearing a full face mask. That guy's wearing a full face mask. Laws were passed on February the 8th, a thousand pounds spot fines, a month in jail. You had the right to go and ask him to remove it. The police looked absolutely befuddled and confused and utterly disinterested, Kevin. And so we have this conversation yep. once again of two-tier yep. policing. You kind of feel, yep. Kev, that they're happy to stand around and not have any arrests to keep the count down, to make it look like mostly peaceful, that dreaded phrase. Whereas, as armistice is the day, when veterans and patriots went in, they donned the riot gear and they steamed in. Kevin, it feels like we've not only losing the streets, we've lost them. Well, I think it comes down again to what I'm saying about leadership. If there's poor briefing and poor direction at the beginning, which is we will not tolerate any displays of hate, anti-Semitic uh, behaviour in this particular case, we will not allow face masks to be worn and we will start to make arrests. That's the issue. And of course, the other point is the people above, if you like, maybe the hundred or so cops who were deployed that day, did the su chief superintendent, the commander public order, did they make sure they had enough assets parked up around the corner to deal with stuff when the problem occurs? I always believe that you, should, if need be, you need two or three hundred, four hundred around the corner, load of mounted police around the corner, so that when you decide to enforce the law, you win. And that what's going on is all too often it's inadequately resourced. Of course, there's a knock-on effect here, but when you pull people into central London for that, you denude the streets of the local areas of where the police are, which opens up the other argument, is have the police been cut too much in the past? And indeed, 
given the demographics of the country, the way it's changing and the non-compliance of large groups of people who live in the UK mm. now, perhaps the police numbers should be increased. I mean, for a similar sized population, France has got more than double the number of police officers that we have in the UK. Well, we've got one of the smallest numbers relative to most European countries. Uh, okay. So, you know, I despair sometimes, but bottom line, it's leadership and probably more investment needed to increase the numbers of police officers uh, out there. OK, Kev, loads more we could talk about, but we have to leave it there simply because of time. Is it the numbers? Is it the gear around the corner? There were lots and lots of riot vans there. But let me tell you this. There was no strong response to that crowd as there was on Armistice Day. It felt like a completely and utterly different response to two different crowds. When you police without fear or favour, that is a thin end of anarchy.